Get ready for a major heat up across the county this weekend. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. The incoming heat wave is supposed to be even hotter than the last one, and there's a great chance heat records will be broken. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis joins us now with a look at just how hot it could get. Carlene. That's right. We are talking about some records that are likely going to be broken this weekend and a lot of heat. This will go down as one of the hottest, if not the hottest Labor Day weekend. We are talking about advisories popping up left and right and a new one's been added. Taking a look at that heat though, the excessive heat warning, it's going to start tomorrow for the inland regions, all the way for the inland valleys, mountains, as well as the desert. Starting tomorrow morning, we're talking daytime highs up to 108 for the inland valleys, below 5,000 feet for the mountains up to 105 and up to 121 for the desert. This time we also have the coast included. So an excessive heat warning will start on Saturday morning and this will take us all the way into Monday for the coast for the beaches between 80 degrees to 92. That's where you're sticking your foot in the sand. But for coastal communities that are surrounding, especially right along the five up to 105 degrees will be a high as we go into the next couple of days. Just keep in mind that the hottest temperatures are expected on Saturday and Sunday. And on top of that, we also have an elevated fire risk. And now watch. I'll have all those details and your complete forecast coming up. Back to Carlo. We'll see you in a few minutes, Carlene. Thank you. The hot weather will certainly put a strain on our power grid. The state is asking Californians to reduce their use during peak hours. But as News 8's Brandon Lewis explains, a rolling blackout is not in the forecast. Now, yeah, Carlo and Barbara Lee, sdg &E, of course, is asking folks to voluntarily reduce their usage over the holiday weekend. But Cal ISO says they think if everyone helps out, we can avoid those rolling blackouts that were a potential last month. The high heat returns to California this weekend. Kaiso is expecting temperatures up to 20 degrees warmer in some cases, and that can stress the electrical grid system over the holiday weekend. Things can change rapidly. We still do have fires in California at the moment, and um, they move quickly, of course, and, and that could change the transmission situation. Kaiso expects to have a better understanding of forecast models on Friday. However, since the weather system isn't as widespread as the one we saw in August, we may be able to avoid rolling blackouts since there's more power on the market. But that doesn't mean we don't need to conserve. We can lose a unit or have a forced outage or a fire could interrupt the transmission line and then we'll have lost our margin. But if there's conservation in play, it helps uh, hedge us, frankly, against um, unforeseen circumstances. SDG and E says it's doing its part by communicating with customers and urging them to turn up the thermostat. Limiting electricity during peak hours, especially between six and nine, when the sun goes down and solar panels go offline. At the end of the day, if everybody uh, steps up to the plate and help with reducing their energy usage, um, you know. The, the grid will function and the lights will be on. That's partially what happened in August. Energy users rallied to cut demand and helped avoid the need for blackouts. We really appreciate everything they did and we're hopeful that this time around everybody will um, do the same thing that they did last time. Now, this isn't a situation that's unique just to San Diego. However, we may be feeling the effects of it because of our location here in Southern California, where our temperatures get a little bit warmer. But really, these requests to reduce usage extend statewide. Carlo and Barbara Lee. We have a crime fight is alert tonight. San Diego police need your help identifying and locating a vehicle and driver that hit a pedestrian in the Midway area and then took off. This is video from the crash on August 14th. It happened near the intersection of Orange and Central Avenues. The 69 year old victim suffered serious injuries. SDPD describes the vehicle as a sedan, possibly dark colored, and it may have some damage to the front of the vehicle. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers 888 <coughs> Excuse me. An attempted bank robbery led to a brief police standoff in Ocean Beach today. According to San Diego police, just before noon, a man walked into the chase on Sunset Boulevard and demanded cash from the teller. Employees didn't give him anything. They were able to contact police, though. When he walked outside, officers were already there. They took him into custody. He was later identified as Lawen Washington.
With Labor Day weekend just about here, local doctors are reminding people to not let their guard down when it comes to the coronavirus. After each holiday, we have seen a significant increase in the um, percent positive on the COVID tests. We've seen, seen significant spikes in the number of people calling in with illnesses. And it doesn't have to be that way if people just follow the common sense recommendations from the public health officers. Dr. Brent Rathbun, an internal medicine and pediatric doctor here in San Diego, says people should stick to the safety precautions outlined by health officials. Masks do protect other folks. The you know, hand washing works, keeping your distance works. And don't throw that all in the trash just because it's another holiday and you're used to having a Labor Day barbecue to end the summer. Dr. Rathbun says along with backyard barbecues, crowded beaches should be avoided. County officials are reporting 325 new cases today out of just over 9,000 tests. That's a positive rate of about 4%. The 14-day rolling average is now at 3.9%. Five new deaths bring that total to 700. Two new community outbreaks were also reported, making that a total of 17 over the last week. San Diego Unified School District leaders, along with congressional members representing San Diego, are calling on federal lawmakers to immediately approve the HEROES Act. This would help school districts get additional funding to be used for financial challenges during the pandemic. School districts need to purchase personal protective equipment for children and for adults. And we need to increase the cleaning and the daily health checks. The HEROES Act was already passed by the U.S. House of Representatives and now awaits approval by the Senate. It comes as a second stimulus bill following the CARES Act and is a proposed to total over $3 trillion. September is National Suicide Prevention Month, and we want to help by sharing insights, resources, and warning signs that family and friends need to know to help a loved one navigate these especially difficult times. News 8's Alicia Summers reports. Suicide statistics are not out for 2020 yet, but experts say with all the negative side effects of the pandemic and shutdowns, suicide rates are on the rise around the world. 2020 continues to be the year of losses. Before the pandemic, the, the most recent research showed that 800,000 people die by suicide each year, and that's globally. That's one person every 40 seconds. Allison Johnson, a licensed marriage and family therapist, says the pandemic and lockdowns have no doubt exacerbated suicidal ideation. What we've seen with the pandemic is an increase in the risk factors that we already associate with suicide, which is job loss, um, increased stress at home, isolation from friends or loved ones or hobbies that you used to enjoy, um, and of course, health-related concerns. Lindsay Kramer, lead therapist at Sharp Mesa Vista, says she has seen a correlation between the pandemic and mental health. Just over the last few months, we've seen a lot more patients that have been coming in that have been negatively, cer certainly very negatively affected. According to the CDC, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States, and firearms are the most common suicide method. Data from the Federal Bureau of Investigation's background check system shows gun sales spiked between March and May. There's just still such little information that actually exists. I mean, this is what's reported versus what's actually happening. So I think that there's a disconnect between what we think we know versus what's going on, and that's the nature of the pandemic. Here are some warning signs. Problems eating or sleeping, mood swings, reckless behavior, and alcohol or drug abuse. If you haven't already, reach out to a withdrawn loved one and ask if they're okay. You could save a life. To connect with suicide prevention and mental health crisis counselors, we've posted a link on our website. Go to cbsa.com and click on the help button. Barbara Lee and Carlo. All right, Alicia, thank you. The city of Carlsbad is trying to give some businesses a boost. The city announced today that it is temporarily suspending fees for outdoor permits during the COVID-19 pandemic. Businesses that already paid for the permits since March will be reimbursed about $8,000. They will not be collecting those fees again until at least the end of next February or the duration of the local COVID-19 pandemic emergency, whichever comes later.